Hey yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're giving you guys our first impressions of the new album from Sons of Apollo titled 2020. So Sons of Apollo is a super group involving Mike Portnoy, Derek Sherinian, both of them former Dream Theater members. I forgot who else is in this band. I know uh, the singer that was in the Winery Dogs project is also singing in this band as well. And they had one album before this, I forgot what it was called, but I did listen to it and I enjoyed what I heard. It kind of feels to me like this supergroup is like if you took 90s, like Derek Strinian era Dream Theater and just made that modernized and had a different singer. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm probably setting my bar a little low for this. Um, I'm hoping I love it. I'm always hoping I love what I listen to, but I'm not the hugest Dream Theater fan. I looked at the band listing on here. You got um, the vocalist did some work with Angui Malmsteam, um, which I listened to a bit of Angui years back and thought it was okay. Uh, the guitar player did some work with Guns N' Roses later on in their career, like in more recent stuff. Meh to that. Um, and then you got a couple members of Dream Theater and the bass player, I'm not sure where he's from. But um, overall, I'm just not that enthused with the lineup. But. That, I, I'm trying not to prejudge it. I'm just setting my bar low. I'm not, I don't want to have any high hopes or whatever because that's going to ruin it even more for me. So I'm going to go with a low bar and hope that they can surprise me and surpass my expectations. I think that's the best chance I'm going to have here. All right, so with that being said, we're going to listen to 2020 for the very first time in its entirety, and we'll be back to give you guys our first impressions, so stay tuned. All right guys, we just finished listening to 2020 by Sons of Apollo, and I'm gonna take the floor here to say that this album was honestly okay. It was, what I find with this album is that for the most part, it's a very accessible and easily digestible album. I feel yeah. like anyone can kind of put this on and kind of enjoy it. And I made that I made a comment to you, I think, for the second track, which is Wither to Black, which is ironically my lowest rated song. I said to him, I, this is like music for having fun. You know, you're out on a road trip, you're out whatever, like just put this on, have a good time. The vocals, I feel like are a little bit of a weak point in this album. And you made a good yeah. point as we were listening saying, you know, this sounds like you get a dime a dozen kind of. Yeah. Like you heard the vocals that, anyway. The vocal style. Yeah. And in that song specifically, I was getting some Chad Kruger vibes. Same. It like it kind of like huh, not a good thing. Nickelback. Huh? Yeah, it had some Nickelback vibes. But one thing about this album that I did like a lot was the riffing. Overall, yeah. good riffs, catchy riffs, fun riffs. Yep. Um, for for that song specifically, with it a black, with fun is kind of the word that kept popping up in my head. But my highest rated track is track number six, "Fall to Ascend." It starts with this awesome, dope drum fill. That was yeah. sick. Yep. And just the riffs in that song feel like a step ahead of the rest of the album in terms of riffing. Like it just feels a lot more interesting. It, like I'm listening to that and it's invoking more of a reaction out of myself than a lot of the other tracks on this album. So that pretty much says, okay, that's my favorite song. Mm -hmm. But I feel like overall, it was kind of hard to comment on this album really. It was, there was not a lot that really stuck out. Um, Fall to a Stem was one of my higher rated songs too, along with Asphyxiation, which was track three, and Goodbye Divinity, which was track one. Um, but even though they were my highest rated songs, it was still hard to find stuff that really poked out at me, stuff to really comment on. Um, Asphyxiation, I thought had good rhythm and melodies. Um, just It just was a little catchier for me, a little more appealing to me in those aspects. The rest of the album fell a little flat for me. Um, Portnoy is a great drummer. I like his, he's, he's got a, an interesting style. There's some stuff he does that I'm like, I kind of like talk, cock my head a little bit. Like I even said to you once I was like, that roll sounded really awkward and weird. I'm sure once I hear it again, I might be able to make more sense of it, but he just, he's got a certain flair to him that just doesn't connect with my brainwaves sometimes. But on the flip side of that, he does some pretty sick stuff as well. Um, very refined, very technical, so that's cool. The guitar player, whose name I don't know, but like I said in the beginning of the video, he did some work with Guns N' Roses. This guy goes wild in some of these solos, but it's so wild to the point where they just lack 
any type of real character or structure. And it's just one of those instances where he's just trying to hit as many notes as possible. Plus he's got some effect on there which makes him sound like fucking R2-D2 on Ecstasy or something. And it just almost ruins it. I like my guitar solos. I like them fast. I like them furious. But I like them to have an element of structure. Structure to them. Some sort of melody to them or some sort of character to them. And I found that the solos on this album just really lacked that. Now, there were some piano parts. I wouldn't really call them solos, maybe just piano parts, um, which I thought were really nice. Um, especially track number five, King of Delusion. There was this one part, it was kind of the bridge area where the piano and the drums were playing off each other. And that was, that was a really, really cool part. And that le led into the solo. Um, Overall, Derek Sherinian was pretty good. I feel yeah. like his soloing was similar to the guitar in terms of like crazy stuff, but I feel like there was a lot more structure and it felt like a it was a little bit more tasteful. Yeah. And there was a lot of more different stuff with the keyboard uh, when compared to the guitar. Yeah. Overall though, like my impressions of this album on a first impression is that this is definitely suited for fans of Dream Theater. Um, which unfortunately I don't really fall into that category, but you never know, man. Well, After listening to an album for a week, you never know what's gonna happen. As a fan of Dream Theater, this album just kind of feels like, it, I don't know, just for me, the best way to describe my first impression is that this album's okay, because it didn't really stand out to me too much. If I wanted something more Dream Theater-esque, I would honestly go listen to Dream Theater. Because this doesn't yeah. really, you know, emulate that, and I feel like that's not what they're trying to do either. I just feel like that's just the style of a few of the musicians, not only because two of them are former Dream Theater members, yeah. a little bit of that bleeds into it, but I would totally separate this from that. I feel like this is kind of its own thing. It has some progressive elements, but overall it's very, like, easy to listen to. Yeah. And, it, like, you know, it's not even bad. Like, we're, we're struggling to kind of say a lot about it. A lot of the riffs are fine. Yeah. It just overall did not feel exceptional. Yeah. But this is only our first impression. Yeah. We're going to be listening to this album for an entire week, and we'll be back next week to give you guys our final review of 2020 by Sons of Apollo. And with that being said, that's all we got for you guys today. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Comment. Tell us in the comments below what do you think of this album? Do you think it is a lot similar, more suitable for Dream Theater? I don't really think so that much, but we'd love to hear your guys' opinions. Remember to subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm TV Fish. And I'm wild self. And keep those horns up.